welcome to Road Testament. I'm Mike Spinelli. This is Leo Parente, and we're talking about the Dodge Viper today, which would have had its 20th anniversary in model years this year if it were still in production. Wow, it's been around that long, and the new ones come, right? Yes, we're going to see the 2013 Viper next week in uh, at the New York Auto Show. So uh, we're going to go back through the Viper history and take a look at what we think is coming and what a lot of reporters have said is coming. And and frankly, why does it matter? Ooh. Oh, ouch, ouch. Ooh. But first, hit us up on at Drive on Twitter, and you've already done that, and let us know what you think about the Viper, because we're going to go to uh, some viewer Viper opinions. So some second. people already gave us opinions. Yes, they did. You asked for their opinion. I did, and I just want to mention that I'm not endorsing STP. It's just that I got hot sauce on my shirt this morning, so I had to go with the faux... Uh, uh, what do you call faux um, like Andy Granatelli look. Andy, Gr Andy Granatelli look. Okay, so first from Lyle LeClaire, this is about the Viper. These are the pros. These I, we actually split this up: the, the Pro Viper and and uh, Anti Viper. Anti Viper. So the Pro Viper, uh, Lyle LeClaire says he loves it. Uh, it's raw and unapologetic. The new one will have more driver's aids, sure, but I'll bet it keeps its character intact. And that's true. We'll be talking about the new uh, traction control and you know all that stuff. And, and I'll be asking you questions about what the personality and character of a Viper should be. Exactly. So keep going. Next, uh, Jonathan, love the Viper, and we need more cars like it, just like hair metal, excessive and fun. I can see a trend here. <laughs> yes. Also, uh, Lardman or Jarrell says uh, I love it personally. The name suits how deadly it can be in the right hands, and that's very true. ACR lap around the ring, for instance. ACR did what, 712 or something around? Yeah, the pretty ring. low time. One of the leadership laps, and a guy yep. named Lardman is talking about naming. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> exactly. Um, also, Robert Barnes like it, but costs way too much for what you get. This is the cons now. Apart from exclusivity, um, yeah, you, you're paying for a little exclusivity. You're also paying for uh, that Viper Mystique you were talking about. Hey, Robert, I have a Cobalt SS for you. Okay? Oh, ouch! Um, also, Nicholas De Bruin says uh, being not of the U.S., and this is important because a lot the Viper is doesn't get a lot of love outside the States. Um, I've never much liked the Viper past the first one. I think it needs an overhaul to keep up with competition. That kind of feeds into the whole uh, new traction control and whatever they're going to do. With yeah, it. but wasn't Viper when it raced a Le Mans winner and raced internationally and had a presence? So that I'm is not very buying true. into this. And I agree, and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more in a second. And... Um, it's like a Shelby Cobra, says Pierre Beliveau, a longtime reader and reader, viewer, but without all the reasons why I'd want a Shelby Cobra. And the interesting thing about that is, is he saying that it's not sexy enough or there's something missing, that Shelby Cobra is, uh, has, has a kind of X factor that the Viper doesn't have? That's too convoluted for me, and maybe it's just not, maybe <laughs> So it's let's, just just, not let's old move enough. on right through there and go right to, speaking of the Shelby Cobra, yeah. Carol Shelby here sitting uh, on top of one of the first production Vipers that we actually saw as the pace car for the 1991 Indy 500. Interesting story, the original uh, pace car was supposed to be a Dodge Stealth RT, mm. but uh, some people objected because that's a Japanese-made car, American race. Some people. I don't know what people, what okay. people? Maybe I, uh, well, whatever. certain people. So anyway, I'm, I'm insulted with that picture because you don't sit on cars. Right. But by the way, back then, just speaking of Carroll Shelby, Carroll Shelby did have a connection with Dodge back then, moved away from Ford for a while, right. did some stuff with Dodge, was around when the Viper came around. I don't know if he did a whole lot of actual development work. With I don't them, think he was involved with the Viper in a big way. Right. But first, let's go with um, the But he's history. a hell of a pace car driver. Absolutely. Actually, he was a hell of a racer. He was a hell of a racer. But... Um, What's this one? This thing? is uh, one of the first prototypes, the uh, VM01 Viper uh, okay. prototype. This, now, you know the Viper as um, a car with a V10. Right. Back then it had the uh, the Mopar, the, the Chrysler 360 cubic V8. inch V8. Right. But, but as a concept, as a development car, or was that the plan? Well, I think they were sort of throwing things around. Okay. Now, development started in 1987. Wow. So, end of the 80s, I think people were starting to kind of get tired of slow cars and, and was, just dealing with fuel economy. Wait a minute, wasn't this a Bob Lutz, let's perk up the brand initiative? Bob Lutz. Bob Lutz. Right. So Bob Lutz, this was his Chrysler period. <laughs> his Chrysler period. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, so this is the first, kind, well, one of the first major prototypes that they did. The second one, this is the VMO2, I believe. Um, this is when they had gone to V10, and don't forget, 
uh, Chrysler owned Lamborghini at that point. So they took their truck V10, and Lamborghini helped them do a couple of things, crank, crankshaft balancing. Okay. Also, um, help them figure out how to cast the block in aluminum instead of iron. So the rumor is true. It really was a truck motor. But wasn't it a V8 that they stretched to a 10-cylinder? I think it was based on the 360, uh, which was a truck motor. But which you can't call it a truck motor because, like you just said, aluminum casting, Lamborghini technology. Exactly. Lamborghini was running uh, V12s and F1 around this time. Right. So, uh, you know, Yay, Chrysler. they did get some help from Lamborghini. Lamborghini didn't build it By the way, that engine own. sucked, but oh, it, my. it did. <laughs> they didn't win a damn thing. Anyway, so, and by the way, they've locked in the shape. Right, exactly. So if you could see, you know, you see where the shape was coming from, some of the early drawings. Um, Kat, you can go one more. Um, so this is the first concept that showed that... Uh, I remember seeing this at 1989 the show. in Detroit Auto Show. It was big. It's big. It's a big car. It's big. It's got a hell of a presence. And that was the thing. You know, I can't really stress enough what impact the Viper had when it came out in 1989. Oh, please try. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. By the way, see the side mirrors in this concept? That yeah. Was, that, was, that was cool. It was cool. I mean, the concept, but, but I mean, the car was so... And at the time, it was so far it ahead. It was so far ahead. It was so amazing to see a car with curves again. Um, curves? Curves. Sorry. Curves. <laughs> you're, you're racing uh, Yeah, whatever. Stuff. Um, I mean, the, the giant wheels, what was it, 335s in the back? I mean, that doesn't seem like a lot now with the, with yeah, the modern supercars. They didn't make it all the way to production, but, but the whole vibe was set in stone. I mean, it was steamroller tires, and giant... It a, and it was a big deal that the, the car from production to concept, or the other way around, yeah. really didn't shift that much. Right, right. Okay. Um, also, you know, interestingly, very short wheelbase. Here's a, the rear. I mean, look, when, if, when people saw this in 1989 Detroit, they just flipped out. And they just did, because, like, there was nothing else like this. Right. Yeah, there's the motor. Overhead valve. Yep. V10. Yep. Push rods. Manufactured uh, headers. Cool. Cool. I mean, cool. You know, ultimately, a very cool motor. Fuel injection, all the runners here. Exactly. So... Made a noise. Ma it made a noise like a UPS truck, as uh, I think it was, was it Road and Track called it a UPS truck I don't or read something? that. I don't read that. And then, and then um, at low revs, it was a UPS truck. At high revs, it was God's own dust buster, I believe. I don't read that stuff. I anyway. watch Drive. Yeah. They're on YouTube. <laughs> at Drive. And then we get to the production car. Hey, so there you go. There's the um, the RT10. Okay. And this really was the side exhaust. Right. It was the side exhaust. Be, be careful. Had. You're going to burn yourself side exhaust. Exactly. Be careful. Um, it was the... All right. So the, the V10, uh, we didn't mention 8 liter. Um, eight, 8 flat or 8 point eight something? 8 flat originally. Okay. Go ahead. Originally 400 horsepower, um, 6 speed manual, 0 to 16, 4.6 seconds. Quick. Quick now, quick then. And quick as hell for 1992 when this finally came out. So saw the concept in uh, 1989. It ran Indy in 91. As a pace car. As a pace car. Came out at the end of the year and uh, as a 1992 model. And there it is. Um, they always show it in red. Exactly. Now then, the next generation. Yes. They it's not to, that Daytona It's not coupe. this one. But, but they took the cues from the Daytona Coupe. Yes. And built the... Let's see if you give me the right picture, and I'll explain why in a minute. So show me the coupe picture. Perfect, because they did. They ripped off the Daytona. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so the blue graphics with the, the, with the graphics, thing. and that's the Viper GTS. Also improved it. Um, and was, to, Shelby was still around, so it was like... Yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, okay. you know, we, we've got our, our old boy around, and he's... And not uh, a big F you to Ford, trust me. It had nothing <laughs> to do with that. <laughs> it was nothing to do with that. Yeah. Up to 450 horsepower at this point, um, 0 to 60 in uh, what, 4.6, 4. Point, what was it, 4. Point, oh, at this point. 4.0. Yeah, so and we by dropped. by the way, I, I'm going to go on record right now. Yeah. I think it's freaking ugly. I hate the chrome wheels, but it was a Viper, and people liked Viper. In 1996, uh, it was pretty badass, but I mean. Yeah, but I like what they did on the track. Well, I think, you know, the double bubble roof, I think that, that, that it just became more usable for the average buyer at that point. And I think that it had gone, by this time, it had gone... I actually suggest, and I don't know the fact here, I think they built this thing to get into racing and to start the homologation process. Okay. So it can run GT racing. There you go. Racing. Perfect. Um, also, uh, went from being a $56,000, $57,000 car to being like an $80,000 car at this point. So, it's a lot of money for raw and unapologetic in the, this time. Ag exactly. Raw and unapologetic like hair metal. <laughs> yes, which you know of. Right. And uh, then in 1999, they put out the ACR, which was a little bit more, uh, it was a little lighter, a little quicker. I mean, just a little bit more horsepower. Sure. 
Um, Actually, this, I think, was the homologation car, because those really aren't BBS, but they uh, gave it the look. I thought they were BBS. Uh, what Do you I have read, inside track? What I read said, no, I don't read that either. What I read <laughs> says they were not BBS, and there were about 100, they had to homologate, and they built 100 of them, mm -hmm. so. Uh, Coney shocks, and so it was, it was the, and it was a little bit lighter. Than, and they were than quick the cars. They were quick. All right, so after the ACR, then we get into the new generation, right? Ah. So then we're in the ZB, I believe, yep. ZB generation. Um, so you could see the refinement creeping in. By the way, not to lose your train of thought, sure. but it was the first generation that they raced. When they went to this generation, they really stopped racing it as a, as a factory effort, even as a private team effort. I mean, I know there were a couple of cars around, but they were just horrible. Right. But the racing heritage was developed in the first generation car. Right, and this is when it went to 8.3 liter. Got it. So when you start moving into the 2013, you know, refinement is going to be, I think, pretty big part of what the new car is going to be. That'll and competitive, and by the way, by refined, I mean it's also competitive with the cars out there, like the SLS and the stuff in that, that in its category now. That'll be interesting, because I'm thinking about those first viewer comments you wrote about raw and unapologetic. Well, so what is a Viper? But well, let's, let's, let's move on. Going. All right, so this is, this is the last gen, uh, this would be the 2008, I believe. That's attractive, uh, that is attractive, and more aggressive on the... Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean... But it's still the same body we just saw. It, right, basically the same okay. body, a couple of, a couple of differences. Um, and but I think getting, by then... It kept getting faster and faster, right? Yeah, 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 by then, I mean, I think they were up to like 600 horsepower at this point, um, zero to 60 in under four seconds. Okay. You know. But much easier to drive. Is this a, a Corvette competitor? Is that what it's all about? Or I mean, it's a lot more expensive more? than a Corvette. It's actually probably a, what, a Corvette, um, Corvette Z06, ZR1 competitor? Okay. okay. I mean, it was, it was always more expensive. I mean, this is a $100,000 car, basically. Okay. At this point. Got it. Um, and then we, uh, we get the ACR, which is just absolutely devastating. And this is the car that did the uh, seven minute and 12 second Nürburgring lap. Well, now it's. God's well, gift to cars. I mean, it is really the fastest true production car. I mean, yes, the, you know, the, the car, like the Gumpert Apollo and the, what was it, the Ultima? What was the car that, or the Radical, I'm sorry. Rad, the, the Radical, which is now the quickest car. I mean, yeah, it had, it's a production car, but it has like a 45 minute startup time. I love the Nürburgring, but I'm so over these lap time things. You know, I know, so I it's not your know, favorite thing to talk about. I, I think it's a credible car. It's a really fast car. It's got all sorts of adjustability. It's a quick race car. Ralph Gilles, 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 yeah. Gilles loves this car. He races it. Yeah. They've got a whole ACR series. Well, here's the thing. I mean, it is an amazingly capable car in the right hands. And the problem is now there are a lot of amazingly capable cars that almost anybody can drive to the limit okay. and not die, unlike this car. So now the next Viper has to compete with cars that have the kinds of traction control and stability control technologies that keep people safe and, and let them go out, tail out a little bit without actually killing them. So, well, I'm gonna feed in my opinion here. Why, okay. does it, why does the car, if Viper is raw, why does it have to compete with refinement? Is it legal reason or is it because everyone else is doing it? I don't, you know what? That's a that's a that's a strong point. I don't I don't know. I mean, I think that you have to keep up with the technology. You have to make a, a compelling technology package. Well, legally, they've got to put traction control, right, in, or some type of stability control. I don't know what the, the law yeah, is. I know what the law is. They've laws got to put right something in, and that's going to take away a little bit of that visceral thing. But I bet you it can turn it off. My question becomes: Is it going to become a car that's chasing a refined Ferrari type driving mentality? And I mentioned Ferrari on purpose mm -hmm. with the heritage of this thing. And Ralph talking about how Ferrari technology, engineering, and materials are going to be kind of inflicted into this new car. Yeah, I, I don't know. Or should it stay rough and raw so and let's, be American? Well, let's talk about the new car then. I love to see what we know. That took a long. That was a long ride, by yeah, the way. Yeah. By the way, just one more thing. That's the ACRX. That's the uh, the Cup car version. So. That's the one with the race tires and the full trick. Full everything. trick everything. Um, okay. Cool. Let's keep going. So this is the. Um, we're going to talk about the new car. What do we know about the 2013 Dodge Viper right now? So next week, we're going to get our first look at it ahead of the Detroit, or around the same time as the New York Auto Show. So that's, uh, that's going to be You've cool. You've got some teaser stuff in here, though, right? Got a little bit of teasing stuff. stuff. leaked out. All right, so this is what, this is the latest teasing, you know, teaser shot from the, from the front. So, um... Hey, it's the same Viper. What, what do you mean? <laughs> front snorkel, oh, okay. double right. bubble, headlights, logo. I mean, you call all those so things Viper ish. kind of... Well, they're, they're the things that make a Viper a Viper. I mean. Okay, well, there you go. All right, well, 
So good. Let's, so it's let's continue. True. The <laughs> internet went nuts over this because this was the Hot Wheels version that shows a little bit of what the. So um, this is the 2013 Viper, according to Hot Wheels. According to Hot Wheels. I'm. Um, it doesn't look that different. It doesn't look uh, a whole lot different. So this is. Well, there you go. Now I can <laughs> clearly really see, see what we've achieved. So this is. Um, this was the the original pixelated because the picture was like this big. Okay, that's no, I did this on purpose, right? So this was, oh. yeah, exactly. So I thought it was freaking going blind. An, an autoblog reader did this, and we'll put up the annotation so you can go right to the site. Um, okay, so uh, Spirit of Viper. So Spirit no of Viper. Question. I've read it's got a more aggressive um, uh, headlight treatment. I've read that these snorkels are a little different. Actually, I think you might have a rendering that shows they're more air exits, mm -hmm. which is logical. The nose, aerodynamics, but still that whole Viper look with the big tires, big wheels, big nose because it's got the V10. Right. Um, and uh, you better love Viper. Hey, there it is. All right, so let's talk about the what There's they're the thinking. You're talking about the motor, right? So um, they're talking about this is an interesting thing because because uh, as the car, as the new car, as more uh, information was leaking out about the new car, there was talk that it was going to go with a Hemi V8. And then, there, then after that, dealers had seen it, and then other things started leaking out that they were, yes, going to go with the V10, but it was going to have some of Fiat's technology. It wasn't going to have Ferrari technology, or it wasn't going to have the Ferrari Maserati connection, okay. but it was going to have Fiat's multi-air system. Basically, multi-air is a, an assist to the cam-driven valves mm -hmm. to make the engine more powerful, 10% more powerful, and more efficient during part throttle and startup. Right. So it's, it's Fiat's way of doing what BMW does fully electronically mm -hmm. to control valves during those moments where our engine's not really efficient. Right, so to keep the unburned fuel from, from yeah. sitting around and, and, and being inefficient. And, and Fiat does it with an electronic, electric solenoid running on hydraulic whatever yeah. that pushes the valve away from the cam during part throttle and startup. Right, which I guess so it can, dis it it can decouple from the cam yep. so that um, the, the computer can take over and do the uh, do the fine tuning adjustments at, during and, and partial throttle. And the obvious obvious thing here is to make a V10 be more fuel efficient, so no one freaks out and right. either a doesn't buy a V10 or buys it and keeps stopping at the gas station every third shift. Right, exactly. By so, the way, this engine is not in the Viper. Where, where's this engine? This engine is actually in the uh, the drag pack um, Challenger. the Challenger drag pack edition. Um, and to me, that's the strongest rumor why the V10 is going to be in the Viper because they kept this engine alive. This is 512 cubic inches. Right. The 8.4 liter. 8.4 liter. 620 horsepower. Yeah. Without the Multimatic. Yep. Yep. Seven, with 700. Wait, 700 horsepower. They're Seven. talking about. No, wait a minute. This is the rumor. By the way, this is also falls in the rumor mill. There's so, there, <laughs> some some rumors have said 700 horsepower for the new car. Well, you've got Mustang at what? A bazillion. <laughs> Mustang and you've got is a little below a bazillion. ZR1 at six and plus. I know. I mean, Lamborghini doing sevens. Everyone's in the sevens yeah. now. By well, way, not everyone, by but the, the way, sevens are the next sixes. Never go into a Detroit bar. Never go into a Detroit bar with the auto executives because they just slap their on the table like, <laughs> in the form of quoting horsepower. It's amazing. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we we should sort of parlay or, or uh, not parlay. What is it? Segue from this into racing because this is your field. Okay. So let me, let me go on record. I, I, you know, Viper may be raw and unapologetic, but the original Viper also had this very strong racing heritage. Um, uh, Chrysler hired companies like Raynard, chassis builder in racing, Orica, who is now running the Toyota TSO 30 program and builds their own racing chassis. And they went out and raced Viper internationally and won just about everything. They won Daytona overall one year. They won Le Mans 24. They won the Nürburgring 24 three years with the Viper. And it was a statement car at that time. Why did I ask you to put this picture up of this 1970s Dodge Daytona NASCAR? Mm -hmm. Because this car at that time was a leap forward statement car for Dodge or whatever it was. And my fear is that this new Viper is just gonna be a continuation of the same old Viper where I'm craving this Viper to be a leap forward statement car for this whole SRT thing. The reason why I pissed, pick, pissed, the reason why I picked this <laughs> picture is because this is allegedly a mold for the nose of the car. But what fascinated me, this is the cutout space for, I think they're called AeroCatch, the racing body fasteners. And I am 
loving the moment where I'm going to show Ralph this picture and ask him, is there a racing Viper in the future or not? The rumor is that there is a program. The rumor is that Riley, the chassis company that does a lot of Grand Am cars, is working on the racing version. I know ALMS would love to have this car. You've got to believe that someone like Marchione would love to go back to Le Mans. But I wonder if it's going to be a little bit of Grand Am and whatever. I think it would be a perfect vehicle, at least from a marketing stance, to, to bring the, to bring a Viper back for, as, as part of a Fiat Chrysler joint plan back to Le Mans. It's the Grand Am thing that I'm not sold on. But, but you have the inside track a little bit more. I, I don't have an inside track other than logic. Um, yeah. you know, Dodge is in a place where they want to still be friends with NASCAR. They need that help. NASCAR always Good puts point. the thumb on their manufacturer partners to support Grand Am. It's easier to do a Grand Am car than it is a full-blown ALMS or Le Mans car. Right, and also Viper has some heritage uh, in, uh, in Le Mans. There we go. That was one of the Oricas, one of the last ones, branded Chrysler. This was just before Orica, Raynard, and Chrysler got together to try to do an LMP car. Right. It was a massive failure, but this thing was winning Le Mans, winning GT championships in Europe. So can Chrysler bring back the Le Mans mojo. How about the question is should they? Good point. Should they hit us up on at drive on Twitter? <laughs> no, As but if, I a few people don't know by now. And next week you're gonna see the new Viper. So it's not gonna be like you have to wait a really long time. It's n like next I've got my what? interview request in. I mean we may be going according to hype, but I'm gonna try to have that <laughs> conversation that we had with Ralph once before and see if we can get closer to where this car really is going to be in terms of its ethic and its whole right. performance and racing vibe. And by the way, should mention that that they're really, really uh, concerned with loyalty. So they're uh, they're giving the, they're giving the Viper Club guys first dibs on the new car, which I think is actually very cool because, you know, people have shown the loyalty to the Viper because, you know, there's been a, we haven't talked about it a lot, but there was a lot of Viper hate specifically because a yeah, lot of people see it as, you know, that kind of brash American, low-tech su uh, supercar. Anyway. That's me. <laughs> Speaking of brash American, low-tech supercars, Leo Parente, I'm Mike Spinelli. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next week.